All right, hello, hello guys. I'm out of breath. It's Maggie, I am back today. I am in my car, let me reshut this. Don't think I shut it all the way. Why do I feel so short? You know, Zach drives the car and he is too dang tall. Isn't there a way to lift? There we go. <laughs> oh gosh, it's about a thousand degrees even though it really isn't a thousand degrees. We're gonna have to open up some windows here. I am, did this move? Maybe not. <laughs> Sorry, I am all over the place today. Today is my first OB appointment. Ah! Um, I am doing this one alone because the place is about 40 minutes away. My understanding is that this can be one of the longest appointments. Sorry, I have to take this off. I'm too hot. My temperature has been fluctuating like crazy. I'm either freezing cold or dying hot, and I'm never dying hot. So, I guess that's all the hormones. Um, place is 40 minutes away. I don't know how long this is gonna take. My understanding is that this is usually the longest appointment because they have to go through a lot of stuff with you. Um, and Zach works today. He is working from home, but we just don't wanna risk it. He could have taken a half day, but he's taking a half day tomorrow for a wedding. So, yeah, that's where we're at with this. But I am just about to leave here. I figured I would ask what questions he wanted me to ask. Did I forget my phone? I think I forgot my phone. Give me one moment. I'm telling you, I am a total mess. I could not find, oh my God, it's right in my bag. Ugh. I swear I am losing my dang mind here. <sighs> I'm exhausted too. Um, what was I even saying? I know, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place, but I'm a little frazzled, a little bit nervous, not super nervous. I think everything will go okay. Um, but I've never made it this far. Like I am nine weeks tomorrow, which is totally insane. And I'm eager to see what they have to say today. I do have some questions that I wrote down, um, some from Zach as well, that I'm gonna go over with them. So my guess is I'll probably answer most of them, but yeah. All right, let's get on the road to this OB appointment and I'll tell you more about it, you know, as we go along. Okay. Let's get some address information and let's get some music and we'll enjoy the ride. Hello. It is a while later. We are finally, well, I am finally home. Um, let me sit down. <laughs> okay, so yes, I got home and basically fell asleep right away after. What? I think, I don't know. Well, Bruno just came down. I don't know. I'm, I'm filming my update. The two seconds I start my update. Sorry about that. Zach, uh, Zach started talking to me. Um, what? Sorry. Okay, so, um, let me update you guys. I really, really liked the OB. Um, the doctor that I saw was great. I may not see them every time that I go in because they have a whole team of doctors, but this one in particular was exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so basically I'll just share what went down when I went in there. This office was ginormous. I checked in, filled out a survey, and I tried to fill out my medical history as best as I could. Um, and then they called me back and we did a really quick ultrasound with the doctor. So this was my first abdominal ultrasound. Mind you, I am eight weeks, six days. I'm nine weeks tomorrow. Um, so it's the first time I was seeing the baby on an abdominal ultrasound, it definitely doesn't look as good as the transvaginal. I think they could just see, you know, it just seems to be more sensitive or maybe their machine was less sensitive. I don't know. But we did see the baby. We saw the heartbeat. We heard the heartbeat again. And I'm like, giddy as anything. <laughs> Sorry, my ostomy is making noise here if you just heard that. Um, and the heartbeat was, or heart rate was 172. Amazing, fantastic. So then from there, she took me out of that office 
and I took a little clip while I was in there, just like a scan of the room that I started in. Then I went to the restroom, they had me pee in a cup, and they were running a few different tests. They were checking for different STIs, UTIs, and they also um, asked for consent for a drug screening, which I'm not on anything, so I was like, I don't care, sure, go ahead. Um, and then we went to another office, same doctor, and we sat down and just chatted. I gave my whole history. Um, we talked a lot. I asked a lot of questions. Um, a few of the things that I wanted to ask about specifically is I wanted to make sure that the prenatal that I was on was okay. And the reason is I am taking the ritual ones because I really like them. Um, they have like a, a flavor to them, not a flavor, like a scent. And the ones that I get are citrus, and that seems to help. I have started gagging with anything that I take, um, but the only things that I don't gag on are the ones from Ritual. So I'm actually taking the prenatal, the choline, and the omega-3 from them. And the thing about it, though, is that I've been seeing online about um, methylated folic acid versus, I guess, just regular folic acid, and I wanted to make sure that they were fine with that, and she was like, yep, that is totally fine keep taking it. Went over medications, uh, talked about promethazine because I am on that with my GI doctor. Nausea is not something new that I've experienced, but it's not, you know, obviously as frequent as all day, every day, like I'm experiencing now. And I just wanted to confirm with her, already did confirm with my fertility clinic, but confirm with her that it's okay that I take that as needed. And she was like, yep, totally fine. Talked about, you know, Zach and his job and like when to potentially tell them that everything's going on. Um, talked about delivery, which I know is a long way off, but I'm, this was the thing that I w wanted to gauge how I liked the clinic and how I liked the doctor. Um, and I want to say that this was a really good conversation. We really went deep into what delivery could look like and I am really encouraged because I went in there this is where I am at with it I would like to do a vaginal delivery yes it is possible um, if you don't know Megan Brown of EMC Brown I think that's her name on Instagram she has very similar surgeries to me has the bar you at all that stuff and she has given uh, birth to two children vaginally and so I, I wanted somebody who was at least willing to consider that, willing to have a conversation about that. And she was more than willing to. In fact, that's the route that it sounds like they are hoping for me um, because it is safer. The less surgery that I have to have, the better. Um, she did say, you know, if if you're one of the people that, one of like the 20% that winds up needing a C-section, obviously it's better if it's scheduled ahead of time and we have the colorectal team on hand um, to consult with because that's what we would do if you were getting a c-section if it's planned it's easier but sometimes you just have to roll with what happens and if it winds up being in the middle of the night you know we're gonna do what we're gonna do and mind you this is the same hospital that um, I had my rupture at and my surgery with that my emergency surgery happened at night, uh, which is, they were worried. And that's why there was a lot of talk back and forth with their surgical team about, you know, are we going to do this tonight? Can she last until tomorrow morning when we have the whole team on board? And they ultimately decided that I couldn't wait. And so they, they went in there, they got all my records that they possibly could. They made a plan with me. They made a plan with everybody and, um, you know, things turned out well. I think everything worked out really well. And, Actually, my incision today, you can, it's pretty faded. Like, I am amazed at how quickly this thing faded. Anyway, so I have confidence that they would be able to take care of me in an emergency situation. Also, this hospital has um, a pretty high level NICU, should that be needed. So that made me feel a bit better. Um, but yeah, it was just a really good conversation. And she was like, honestly, you know, surgically, you're kind of a mess, but we have a handle on things and you're doing well. And so I don't think that I would treat you really any different than anybody else. Um, the way that it was worded to me, it, it sounds like I am not going to be placed with a high risk doctor, which is wild to me. I just automatically assumed that that's the way things would go. Um, uh, because I just, I know on paper, 
I look scary, but then I think people see me and they're like, oh, actually, <laughs> actually things are okay. Um, and you know, I explained I'm in remission with my Crohn's disease, um, and I'm doing well with it. I'm not on medications and I haven't been for like six months since the ectopic pregnancy. And yeah, I was really, really encouraged by that. So obviously whatever the safest way possible when it comes time to that, that's, that's what I'll do. But I feel as though I've heard so many people say with their ostomy or with the Barbie butt surgery that their OBs automatically say C-section, like you have to get a C-section. And it was awesome to hear, like that actually might not be the best option. Like vaginally would probably be better <laughs> if we can do it. So yay, that was really cool. Um, and then we talked about what I can expect. So my next appointment is already scheduled. I scheduled it today. It's gonna be, so it's supposed to be for 12 weeks where I get a more in-depth ultrasound. Um, the one that I had today was only a few seconds. It was just to confirm where the baby was and that there was a heartbeat because um, she hadn't seen it. You know, my fertility clinic has been doing it. So scheduled a more detailed ultrasound. I also am gonna get the NIPT testing, which is the non-invasive prenatal testing, I believe, which is just blood work. Um, and it looks for chromosomes, like chromosomal abnormalities. I guess the baby's blood is like circulating through my blood system and they'll be able to pull, um, you know, that information from my blood work. I, it's just incredible what we can do. The other thing about this test is it will tell us the gender. Zach and I do not care. We do not care. I asked him, do you have a preference? He's... Is he talking to me? I can't tell if he's on the phone or he's talking to me. Anyway, um, neither of us care. So, you know, I don't think we're planning any special reveal or anything. That's just not our style. Maybe we'll just do something, the two of us, where we open the email together, whatever it is that we get. Um... But yes, yeah, so I guess I would find out probably around 13, 14 weeks. And I could have gotten that blood work done earlier. They said I could come in around 10 weeks, but I said, you know what? Let's do all of it together. If that's what you recommend, it's easier. I don't have to make another trip out here. Um, let's just get it all done at one appointment. So yeah, that's going to be three weeks from today. That'll be October 24th. Technically, I'll be 11 weeks, 6 days, but the next day I'll be 12 weeks, so hopefully that's okay. They they scheduled it, so yeah, kind of wild, um, but I really, I feel confident with this doctor. She seemed so knowledgeable, and she was asking me about uh, my ostomy and stuff, and she's like, wow, you seem really knowledgeable, and I said, well, yeah, I was a GI nurse over at CHOP, and um, you know, I kind of dedicated my life to learning about this and she's like, oh, so what do you do? Are you a nurse now? And I said, no, but I do like social media work for ostomy stuff. And she was like, oh, that's so cool. She knows of somebody who does something very similar, has Crohn's and an ostomy. And I was like, oh, I wonder who it is. But yeah, um, very nice. I just, I really liked her. Obviously I can get any of the doctors in the practice when I go, but I just, I felt very confident with that. Um, yeah, very good appointment. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that this baby continues to grow and that everything's good. I can't believe it. I'm nine weeks tomorrow. Um, and we have our wedding, another, our wedding. We have a wedding we're going to tomorrow for another cousin of mine. So I will probably do a little video for a nine week update. My belly is definitely getting pretty bloated, pretty bloated, which is not a common thing that I feel. Cause you know, you have an ostomy, you have an ileostomy, things just go through so quickly. I don't usually get a lot of discomfort in terms of bloating, but I am bloated. I am bloated and I'm choosing to say that that's the baby. <laughs> Anyways, so that's my update for you. That was my first OB appointment. Very positive experience. Really liked the the office itself. Um, you know, everybody was super professional and it was clean and they have a lot of stuff that they could do just in office. So 
couldn't really ask for more, and it's only 10 minutes from the hospital that I would deliver at. Mind you, the hospital is like 50, 55 minutes from here, so I guess the good thing is if I went into labor, we would probably go to the office, right? Or if, if something was going on, we'd go to the office first, they'd check me out, and they'd probably be like, oh, you need to go to the hospital, and it's only 10 minutes down the road, so that's good. That's a positive. Um, it's just, unfortunately, where we live, we're not in the middle of nowhere, but where we live, there isn't a lot of hospitals or doctor offices. Thankfully, my primary care is right down the road, but other than that, there's not a whole lot close. You have to go at least 15, 20 minutes away to get to other types of doctors, and even with that, like... I don't know, the specialists that are closer to us, I, I don't know. I like the ones that I've chosen that are just a little bit further away. Anyways, I'm blabbering. That was my update for you. Let's keep our fingers crossed that things continue to go great. And I will see you guys in the next. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you are looking for a way to help support my channel, consider liking this video or even subscribing. You can also check out my store at letstalkivd.shop. I have stickers and hoodies like these guys over here just related to chronic illness and inflammatory bowel disease, something fun. And I also have a coupon code for my YouTube watchers. You could also become a member of my channel like the wonderful people scrolling on screen here. They've become a member and they have access to videos a little bit earlier. It's a great way to support my channel and really just watching my videos means the world. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next.